Now, I cannot do firefighting without the thought that there is a deliberate process. And so sitting inside the Army, we do have this thing, and I look and say, boss, I have an accelerated process and I have a deliberate process. I have set aside architects that have the ability to rapidly respond and give to you relevant, usable, understandable architecture in the form of operational products that you can understand. And I can do that. But I must have a deliberate process that allows me to move forward. And as I move forward, to have the opportunity to say, hey, listen, this is not where I always want to be. Because the firefighting becomes exhausting. And so I want to have the ability to say that little by little, left foot in front of the right foot in front of the left foot, we've got the ability to have a deliberate process that ultimately serves us well. And that comes in many, many different forms. Now, the Army is changing. And inside the Army changing, uh, we're standing up what's called the system, 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 engineering system. Uh, I don't know exactly what it means to be an architecture-centric engineering process. I know what it means. I've read it. I'm informed by it. But I don't know what practically that means in terms of that relationship that has to be wedded. I also know that we've done some things in the Army that is helping in regards to me, even in my firefighter role or in my deliberate planner role. And that is the ability to take architecture data and to be able to reuse it and to apply it against the problem set that is given to me. The problem with DODAF and why I don't like DODAF, as I said, it's about views. It is not about the views, it is about the data. So what has the Army done to help me in my accelerating deliberate process? As I do these things as a firefighter, it has said, you know what? We're going to have a single authoritative source for all architecture data that's in the Army. We're going to use a federation strategy to be able to achieve that. But there will be one, one source to go to that says it's authoritative. We're very fortunate in the United States Army. I'm very fortunate. That happens to be the environment that is located inside my organization. We call it the, the KD, the Capabilities Based Architecture Development and Integration Environment. That is there. Single authoritative source for the Army, federated in such a way, and that is where we will find authoritative data. It will have with it standards, it will have with it governance and policy. So the Army did one other thing which I think was probably a mistake. And that is they decided that they would have an architecture data steward for the Army. One single individual that is establishing and enforcing data standards through policies and governments. And that happens to be the guy who owns the environment. And that's me. That's a good news story. Because that affords me the opportunity as I'm in the planning process, of the deliberate process of ensuring that what is inside that environment and the standards correspondingly that have to come along and the policies that implement those are in place so that when the question is formed by the operator, we can answer. And in the firefighting role, it's awful nice to be able to go into the library and get a set of use cases and be able to take those use cases and be able to apply them against the problem set. The G3 of the Army has declared that there will be no investments made in the network right now. We're focused right now on a network issue that is not underpinned by an architecture. That's a good news story. But that is a significant amount of responsibility that we now bear in terms as architects of being able to come in and say where that investment strategy needs to be. So, from my perspective on a takeaway, both the firefighting and planning approaches are complementary. They don't compete, they complete one another. Quit feeling, quit feeling guilty at the fact that you're reacting. I, I think it's okay to react. I think you've got to learn lessons through each one of those firefights, and you've got to then apply them against the deliberate process but quit being guilty for it because you know what? There are so many that are in the community 
that we call our customer base. They didn't even know that architecture was available for their use. And when they find out, they say, I want to use that. The bad news story for me today, I don't have enough skilled architects to be able to do the tasks that have been given to me. It is not an issue of resources with me. Some of you may suffer through resources. I don't. And I say, it's not a matter of you giving me more money. It's the skill set. Because inside of this, at the very bottom, what I say is architecture is an art and a science. And it is not enough to just be able to say, I have been trained. You have to be mentored and coached over a period of time before you'll ever get it. And so it amazes me today the number of individuals that walk through my door and inside my organization, we have about 100 contract team members. It is amazing to me that they come through the door and say, I've got this set of credentials. And then we put them in a practicum and guess what? It's not there. And so we got a journey. We're eventually going to get there, but we're going to have to do it in terms of the community that is there. The other thing I will speak to you is in terms of, it is great that you say, have a seat at every table. The first time I said that to my three star and said, I want a seat at every table. And this is why I want a seat at every table. The answer was, It took a while. We're now beginning to sit at those tables. But it just doesn't happen. It's got to be intentional. It's got to be purposeful in terms of that. Decisions are made with or without an architecture underpinning. The burden's upon us. So be a firefighter. I approached it eight years ago that said, if I could not do it to a level of decomposition, that allowed me to know all of the details so that I could cover all of the questions that might be asked of me. I simply was not going to do it. To the place that today, as I said, you want it, the architect's going to be in the room, and we're going to inform it. So for me, firefighting is a good thing. I'm a firefighting card-holding member. It's in my wallet, and I'm very proud of that. Now. Am I alone? Are any of you others firefighters? Any of you fight fires? Okay? It's just reality. And so let's confess it. And after we confess it and acknowledge it, let's just make sure that as we go through this journey that we've got the ability perhaps to incorporate both to bring us to the end state that the customer wants us to be at. And with that, I'm going to turn to Bob. Uh,